call the meeting together at 7 o'clock. Thank you, Pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, water usage is way up. I've been 
like to see the residents of the town, you know, not being a restriction, but please try to conserve outside water use as much as possible. Our wells are down, you know, they dropped three feet in the last uh, since the kids got out of school. And I was looking back through all the records we've had over the 12 years it's been online. This is right now we're about eight inches lower than the wells have ever been since the system has been in business. We did have the town of Rotterdam ask us today about possibly supplying them with water because they're in a dire emergency down there with the pump out. Talking to Doug Cole, Doug Cole says it's not a very good idea. Our well can get too low. We're using too much water. Our pressure is too high. And the only reason we wanted it was because of an emergency in case of fire happened in the western end of the town. But, uh, he said in three hours' time, our tanks would be, uh, three to four hours' time, our tanks would be dry and our system would be dry, but our wells wouldn't keep up with it. So, probably not a good idea. They're hoping I'll be back on the 17th, well, Friday or the 17th. Back up, but Tuesday. I will ask uh, our web administrator to put up a bulletin up on the uh, on the website to conserve water, you know, possibly yeah. for a little formal restriction if we have to go. Yeah. And uh, I'll ask my house, but I'm going to ask him to put up a note there saying, "Hey, the water bill is out. You know, if you haven't received the bills in ten days or so, you know, please call." Yeah. Uh, you know, I look. Um, any estimated uh, time of arrival on the uh, corporal? Uh, talked to Doug about that this afternoon also, and they have not responded to his emails for the questions he asked them about the cost of uh, putting on these at anodes and how long they might last and everything else. Uh, he said there, we talked about uh, bacteria eating soils and highly soils that would be chewing up the bolt and everything. But not all the sites have had them, and probably the soils we got might be in just a certain areas. So the rest of the original system, the bolts might not be going as fast as what we think they, you know, the pre previous ones had. Being it's been wood, uh, a year since we've had any trouble with the bolts. Mm -hmm. um. So as far as meter reading, we said we're done for this, this round, anyway? Yeah. We build out about uh, 78,000. We still got to pick up a couple of them yet. We have to be able to people, well, between deaths and uh, trying to catch up with people. You know, must be on vacation or anything else. And some of the outside readers no longer work. We have to directly read off the meter. We do. Uh, with, uh, about 16 million gallons we built out for. I saw a stack of, uh, I was very impressed when I walked in this one. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a number of bills. Yeah. But, uh, there's 288 of them that went out. So. Um, I can't think of anything else. Um, Okay, we'll probably have for the doctor. Joe? Lou? Mm -hmm. No. Mr. Edwards? No, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Mr. Code Enforcement. Um, we've had a normal month. Permits are up. And a newsletter, on my newsletter about the pools. We've had some issues with pools, not just in this town, but other towns. Um, the two people did comply that were cited last year, so they put different pools up this year. The foreclosed house that we've been working on for a few months, we did get in contact with the attorney down the White Plains that's handling the bank, and they were, they were serving an eviction notice. And I informed the attorney that no one's lived in the house for about a year, and they weren't aware of that. They figured he was still living there. So that was going through the process. That was a 30-day process with the sheriff. So hopefully they'll start getting that property up in our residence that's been you know, patient with us about the property. So they are 
going to have someone who hopefully can come take care of it. Right. But other than that, just a normal one. I had a question for you, and God, I can't remember. I tried to pause the ball there to get it.
other is uh, the contract that we have with the Sheriff's Department and the, and the county for uh, court security. Right. Just to find out. If we could back up to the water with the refinance, and I'd like to, you know, put a date in here when we can expect, um, you know, maybe some initial feedback. I reached out to the city of Amsterdam, and they've given me a couple of Financing firms that the city of Amsterdam has used to consolidate oh. some of their loans into departments. Not as an overall general fund, for example, but um, their sewers, they combine some loans, consolidate some loans, the water department consolidates some loans. So if our resident can't help, you know, um, it's got to be my, uh, my workbook. Um, I got two names um, for some uh, refinancing. Agencies. Okay. Uh, I can get. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I'd like to be able to have some kind of feedback on the 814 meeting on that too, just to say where we're going. Oh, we'll talk about that. Um, right. Sorry to interrupt. No. Same is true with the. <coughs> well, we talked with Sheriff Magistine, and uh, we set up an appointment with Kathleen Mooney and the County Manage uh, yeah, Manager. Attorney who is Chris Gardner. Uh, Kathleen is pretty hard to get a hold of to set something up, so I'm, I think by the 14th of August, I wish you had at least had the chance to discuss with that. I'm actually probably going to talk about it right now, just so Michelle knows. So we went down to talk to uh, the sheriff. It was kind of a sad story, but um, and I'm probably sure you already know the answers. I mean, he, um, he, he came back and said, you know, this is the contract, it's time and a half. And we kind of said, well, but they're not working time and a half. And by the end of the meeting, the feedback was, look, you know, um, we, I made a proposal. I said, look, you know, what if we signed a contract for four years? You know, you're having staffing issues, I understand. But if I sign a contract with you for four years, I'm saying you need two guys here for four years. That should take off your staffing issues. You know, you guarantee me that, I'll sign the contract and we'll go straight time. And he fed back and said, look, you know, when Joe and I go coach the Kathy Rooney and the prosecutor, he said, we'll charge you whatever we get charged. Meaning that if he's fully staffed that night, then it should be straight time to us. But if he's got a backfill to jail, we're going to get charged overtime. I'm not sure I agree with it, but that's the theory it is now. To take it one step further, I said, well, you know, what if I brought Dwaynesburg into the solution? I said, what if Dwaynesburg came up to us and Renee, because they got two nights down there, I said, Renee, uh, Mary, who was a supervisor in Dwaynesburg, I said, well, what if they signed up for two nights a week, and we signed up for, two, for a night a week. That's three nights out of a five night week. And you can't say we can't get straight time on that if we even earn a two year or four year degree, you know, contract. So that's what we're gonna try to go back to Kathy Mooney. And, uh, uh, well, there was also the issue of having two guys instead of just one. But that's operating procedures for the Sheriff's Department. They want to have two guys. That's standard procedure for them. So we said, okay, with that, throw that out as an option for reducing the cost. <coughs> and, um, and that's how it started out originally. And Nick Morrow was the supervisor at the time, and they amended the original contract to include two guys. So in any case, we're, we're just going to explore the, the you know, with Kathleen, we're the county manager, and then the attorney, to see if we can. Because what the sheriff said seems to be fair to me. Yeah. You know, my concern was, my really, was the fact that we were we had the guys that were there on schedule. We had the guys that were scheduled to be in the jail on that night, coming up to the town to pay and paying them straight time while somebody else was being brought in 
to go out to a court that they weren't even assigned to for time and a half. So essentially, the town of Princeton was paying time and a half for officers that we weren't even getting. And that was my biggest complaint. And that's exactly the complaint. And this is, I want to, you know, more finish here for a caveat because the next discussion will somewhere else in the agenda is exactly what's going to happen with the Unified Communication Center. That's exactly the same scenario. Because that to me is un unethical on the part of the, of, of the county manager to I was going to say that the sheriff. in front of the sheriff. But. Well, I mean, it is. I mean, they, why should they be paying somebody a time and a half just because it's a part of their negotiation and their PBA, when, then we should get those guys that are on time and a half. If that's part of the policy, then we get the time and a half guys. Right. And, you know, I. It was very sensitive not to say that, but I was thinking along the same lines, like, wait a second, you have a resourcing issue mm -hmm. and you're pushing it on us. Mm -hmm. That's not our problem. Which is, I said, why don't we sign a contract? I'll guarantee, you know, 16 hours a week or whatever, four hours times two, whatever it is. But, so anyway, okay. we're going to keep going on, on yep. that. So Just we're, let me know. You know we're Renee, nice. did, Renee, we signed with the office, uh, office of Court Administration. They have uh, weapons carrying officers, and that's how they're doing it in Swainsburg. <coughs> she can go to the sheriff. Mm -hmm. She signed the contract. <coughs> I did talk to Renee. She would be open to both townships going down to talk to Kathy Rooney and you know Sheriff D'Agostino and to the prosecutor and say, hey, you know, this is a fair offer. You know, mm -hmm. We'll take care of most of your resources. 